Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. In the Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark, the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people I am hurt. I mourn, and this man has taken a hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Appointed for this day are verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 79, found on pages 4 and 5 of your worship leader. Please read responsibly by half verse. O oh God, the heathen have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Amen. Jerusalem a mighty of rubble. They have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the air. And, and the flesh of their faithful ones to the beasts of the field. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem. And they have become a fairy. We have become a reproach to our neighbors. And an object of scorn and derision to those around us. How long will you be angry, O Lord? Will your fury blaze like fire forever? Pour out your wrath upon the heathen who have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob, and made his dwelling a ruin. Remember not our past sins. Let your compassion be swift to meet us. For we have been brought very low. Help us, O God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. The epistle is taken from First Timothy. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and for all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn, Paris Lord Jesus, is the familiar to me, number 383. <laughs>
and a parable is that the parable contains an action showing God's freedom. And the point is in the twist at the end. In this, if this story had been a standard moral fable, the manager would have been locked up until he repaid every last cent, proving that crime does not pay. In the parable, the master laughs. There is no punishment. For the point of the story is not about what you get, but who you are. What kind of life are you leading? Is the point of your life to be successful, or is it to be faithful? The audit is not about money, but about character. The audit is an invitation to walk onto a bridge to a new kind of living. I live on the Outer Banks, and we have just completed yet another tourist season where most of the cars in the Western Hemisphere, <laughs> filled with people, cross the bridge in order to pay a small fortune to taste what we residents have free every day. Many residents complain about the influx. There are others in the hospitality business who know that they, that they must make a profit in this short season to make a living. And this year has been rough because the usual influx of summer lower wage workers from foreign countries means needed to keep the businesses profitable have not been available for several years for different reasons, but they've not been available now because there's no place that workers can afford to stay since rents are so high. You have to keep wages low if you can have any hope of making money. Before the year is up, every employer is going to undergo an audit to determine if he or she can open again next year. Everything is more expensive. There was an article in the local paper that reminded us who live on the other banks, as if we residents didn't already know, that once you cross the bridge onto the islands, Gasoline prices are going to raise about 40 cents a gallon. The state attorney generals in previous years of the urging of candidates for public office investigated what they what was claimed to be illegal price gouging. But the rulings from the, from the offices were that this is the cost of doing business in the reality of the tourist economy. We undergo audits all the time. And the audits are always changing, depending on where we are in life. The playwright Samuel Beckett said, in the afterlife, we'll all sit around talking about the good old days, when we wish we were dead. Eco-psychologist Eric Erickson saw life as a series of eight milestones of psychosocial development, from infancy through death which give bridges for who we might become in life. For instance, the first stage of psychosocial development is the time between infancy from birth to 18 months. This is the struggle between trust versus mistrust. Does the world have a welcoming feel for it, for the infant? Is there a sense of knowing that there's a certain order that you can trust? Or is it full of mistrust, where you're not sure that you can count on anybody? Each child is doing an audit of the world in which she or he lives every day. If you're hurt, will someone come to ease the pain? If you're hungry, will someone feed you? If you're frightened, will someone comfort you? How far is the infant going to go on that bridge to the next milestone of the toddler? where the issue is autonomy versus shame and doubt. The last stage of Erickson's psychosocial development is the time between age 65 and death. The struggle between integrity or despair. This is the stage my wife and I operate out of. 
We're in the late autumn audit of our lives. The view from this bridge is to ask, did we waste our time in how or where we live? Are we bitter that some parts of our life have passed us by? What do we do with all this stuff? Is this bridge finally a time for us to get rid of the baggage of not forgiving the sins of others? Are we where we are supposed to be? Forty years ago in seminary, I read an article in the Theological Journal about a proposal to build an escalator to make it easier for a tourist to get to the top of the Shwedagon Pagoda of the eight sacred pairs of Buddha in Rangoon, now Yangon, and in Burma, now Myanmar, in Asia. This was an article that explores two different ways of pilgrimages. The Western way is that the holy moment is the arrival at the first and place of being, being held in worship. And you just say, that's the whole point. That's why I'm here. And you just cross it off your spiritual to-do list. The Eastern way is that the journey itself is the purpose for the holiest experience. In each moment, from the beginning to the return. The Western solution is the proposal was to get more people to the holy spaces in the least amount of time. The Eastern response was to slow it all down, taking one holy step at a time, one holy liturgical breath at a time. It's like the question of when does communion with God and the Holy Communion service on Sunday morning really happen? Is it 11.15 a.m., which is the moment of getting the wafer of the bread? Or does the holy begin when we get out of bed on Monday, where one wakes up in that morning in each step, each breath that is taken? for the rest of the week. From the reading of that article, I found to take each pilgrimage as if it was a journey that is more important than the destination. Is the spiritual life found in the bridges we are on? I want to walk barefoot up the steps of each of the four torn terraces of the Sushwitagam Pagoda of the eight, eight sacred hairs of the Buddha in Yangon and Myanmar one step at a time, up four different staircases where each step is a liturgical step, each breath, one at a time, where each breath is a liturgical breath. Yet there's also a justification of a desire for fulfillment of adolescent fantasies sparked by reading Kipling's poem, Mandalay. I dreamed of being in Burma 300 kilometers south to watch Kipling's dawn come up like thunder out of China across the bay. Or at least in the line by, by the old Mormon pagoda looking eastward to the sea, there's a Burma girl was sitting, and I know she thinks of me. With the present political situation in the place once known as Burma, I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime. But who knows? I can live with the fact that there is no Burma girl who thinks of me. Also, I now live on the second floor of a condo where there are 33 steps in four turns of seven steps, then eight steps, then from the parking level to the first floor, nine steps, then nine steps, from the first floor to the second floor. I average to climb up and down about four times a day. That's 264 steps up, 264 <laughs> steps down. Now, two of those trips, I'm walking the dog, and I'm usually not focused in on the steps. But the other two times, I've learned to slow down. And each step can be a liturgical step. Each breath, a liturgical breath. To center myself 
usually I choose all the offensive things. But I also know that when I get to the top, there's a nice Toledo girl who waits for me, who takes the elevator. This last week, slow dead, slow walking over bridges one step at a time, is on the news in Britain with the long lines of people passing by the casket of the late Queen Elizabeth. Some are tourists who want to check off their pilgrimage to-do list. However, for many others, it's a spiritual pilgrimage to find to make meaning in their lives. Each step is a church and step of facing the preciousness of life, the inevitability of its ending, and the hope of something beyond this life. In this time of psychosocial development, it is important to come to grips with our relationship with death. Are we afraid of death? I try to be careful, but we are on all those bridges to keep the appointment in Samara, wherever that Amara may be. In the meantime, none of us are perfect. And there's always a litany of mistakes and things we have done which we ought not to have done and not done those things which we ought to have done. It is one of the reasons we do confession usually during Sunday morning services. Examination of conscience are not only to uncover shame, but to time, but provide a time for an audit of one's day on the bridge of life. In our kitchen at home, there is sometimes hanging a kitchen towel, chewing, showing an alluring, sexy woman with a come hither smile, saying, I'm going to hell in every religion. <laughs> it's the kind of gift given by friends to the minister's spouse so that she won't take the responsibility too seriously and remind him or her that we are both sin saints and sinners in the hands of a loving God who offers forgiveness for all things. So how are your audits coming? Remember, they are graded on an unbelievable curve. The poem I wrote is called Bridges 2022. The magic lines at center of the right memorial bridge mark the difference of 40 cents a gallon for fuels from those who are just plain standard visitor pools and those paying his neighbors who don't cross the great bridge. It is the casual exploitation of people who are strangers, who don't ever want to see and don't ever want to see again due to market forces versus awkward contact of neighbor in the daily courses, like the temple moat treatment pilgrims by money changers. Every moment and person is a gift, not to be squandered, with less than the full honor as precious gift of the divine, as if we were placed there together, visiting a holy shrine, when we get into this time and space, serendipitously wandering. The gospel of the day reminds me, as a manager, I squander so much by holding back what I was supposed to cherish, not clutch. Please stand and join in affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which began on page 7 of the worship leaflet, or page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. <laughs> Believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are on one, which begin on page 8 of the worship leaflet, or page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Ron, our bishop, Tom, our Sullivan, for Grace Episcopal and Christ the King Lutheran Church in Whiteville, for the Episcopal Farm Ministry, Mrs. Louisa Garzon, Director, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Bahasi and all the towns represented in this parish, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or in outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the members of this parish and our family, friends, and neighbors who are listed on our prayer list, and William Alexander. For those affected by adverse weather, especially today, as in Puerto Rico, and those in Alaska, for all victims of gun violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us offer thanksgiving for Ellie Griffin, and this Elizabeth McCollum Griffin, on her birth, and for Jeannie Byers, Jeannie Taylor, Sid Lieberman, and Jonathan Johnson, who celebrate birthdays this week, and for the Dame Judy Prayer Group and Carolyn Hill, in whose honor the altar flowers are given this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poorly oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Susie Theodrakis, Raymond Benthal, and all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. Lord our God, set the fervent prayers of your people, and the multitude of your mercy look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help. For your gracious, O Lord, are consoled, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in the eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace.
together with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It's right and good and joyful what they always hear for give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you are greatly glorifying the assembly of your saints. All your creatures praise you, and your faithful servants bless you, confessing before the rulers of this world the great name of your only Son. Therefore, we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and our angels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Keep the feast. Hallelujah.
body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.